So, have you always lived in Augusta, Georgia? Yes. I mean, no. This year or my whole, like my whole, your life? whole life? Oh yeah, no, no. So, how did you end up in a, in Georgia? <laughs> Military. Yeah. Um. So for me, I've lived in Augusta my whole life. Um. We live in a single family home. It's like a two story, five bedroom kind of home. Could you tell me what kind of home you live in? I live in a uh, two story, five, five bedroom home. Um, and I just ran out of room. Okay. Um, so, have you ever invested in solar either for your rooftop of your home, your property, or as part of a business or a program through your unit? No. Um, so, could you tell me why like, you've not adopted solar? Um, I guess it's just the accessibility, like there's not like much out there that's promoting solar energy. So we, we don't know anything about it, aside from what we have here with Georgia Power. So did you like make that decision or was it made for you? It was made for us. So if it was available to you, do you feel like that would be something you might would be interested in? It depends on what the uh, cost to get it versus um, cost of having just a regular energy like the uh, like Georgia Power to do it. Okay, so I'd like to talk a little bit about rooftop solar adoption in general. I'm going to give you a map of the United States. If you will, just put an X or a circle wherever you think solar is adopted in the country. Maybe. Texas, nah, never. I think so. Okay. Wait. Okay. So, what makes those areas different from... Say Georgia. Um, Georgia would be like a, I don't know more. To me, I guess not as well in Augusta. It's not as like rapidly progressing as the other states on the outer sides, like on the west coast or southern Florida or even the north. Like we're really, really slow at like picking up a lot of stuff. So I don't know. Like we just started putting up sidewalks or <laughs> some gotcha. of the roads. So I mean. Um, so what kind of people do you think live in those communities that you've marked? Um, what kind of people? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it's going to be, I think a lot of the parts I've picked out is more so just a diverse, more diverse group of people. I guess that's why I picked that. So why do you think people in these areas that you mark, um, have the most rooftop solar? Um, I think, I guess, I would think they would have more options out there. You know, these are some of the places that I, I believe that have more opportunities as far as like different businesses, different um, like work, work uh, opportunities. So, and so there's a company, uh, it's, it's, it's more competitive, I think, out there versus just here in, in Georgia. I did find it really interesting when we went to Hawaii. It was all over all the rooftops over there. Yeah. I was like, that's interesting. I know. I knew some of the places that, that had it in Hawaii. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing, but with the map of Georgia. So just mark which areas or circle what areas you think. They, they have it. They have it. No. I think Augusta might have some. In Columbus. But that's it. Okay. So what makes, so you put Augusta in that category, yeah. so why would you think? The only reason why I put Augusta there is because now we're slowly progressing forward. So I think there might be some of the places in Augusta that do have offer solar power, but it's not as big as the other places that I pointed out earlier. So say like the other three that you mark. So I know Columbus has a military base out there. so. That's why I put it out there. It could be the influence of like, hey, competitors coming out there. So more military bases, the more um, different cultures and different like competitions come in and people want to uh, present their work opportunities for people out here. So okay. Atlanta is only because it's one of the biggest cities here in, in Georgia. So I wouldn't, I would doubt that they didn't have um, solar energy out there. Savannah, I think is a little bit more progressive than Augusta, so that's why I marked Savannah there. Okay, I'm answer that one. And, 
Okay. So, what about most of your close friends in Georgia? Do they have solar? No. Why do you think they don't? I think one is, um, like I said, the availability of solar and cost efficiency. And I think it's just people don't know much about it. Like, how much more would they save with solar versus I'm going with just a regular uh, electric power? Okay, so now if you don't mind, I'm going to ask a few questions regarding the role of food in your day-to-day -day life. So, if you will, please tell me what your regular day with food looks like. So, what your meals and snacks typically look like. Um, me, because I drive for the most part, so I pick up anything that I can find along the way. But I try and make it back home for lunch. So, lunch is whatever I have at home. Um, sandwiches. So for me, it's I'm at home during the summer, so I'm just eating something there, and then we normally either go out to eat for dinner or cook a big meal there. So could you tell me what your go-to meal is and why? My go-to meal would be, man, I don't really have one. <laughs> it's more or less what I have. Like, so I usually stock like just frozen chicken or any kind of frozen meats. So when I get home, I already have my seasonings that I want to do it with. It's just either I bake it or fry it. It just depends. Okay. So how often do you cook your own meals? So when I get the chance, but past month, maybe about twice or three times a week. Okay. So are you the only person that makes the decisions about the food purchases in your household? No. What do you, other people's roles look like for that? Um, so I have a niece that has allergies. So we would have to cook meals based on what she can and cannot eat. Okay. Um, so how often do you purchase food for your household? Maybe twice a month. So if you could paint this picture for me, let's say you're taking a trip to purchase food. What does that look like? Um, for me, it would be like I would go to the neighborhood Walmart, which is the closest one we have here. Um, and I would just start from like, like that, like just start from like the produce section. I would first want to shop in my house, like look around in the pantry, see what I got first. So a lot of times what I've seen is I go out and buy a pack of ramen and I have like a whole pack that's sitting there. So that's what I do first. Just make sure that I have, I, what I need is not... It's still at the house and I still have enough of And then I go to the store and then I start buying everything I need. So meats is the biggest one for me. Um, we would buy as much meat as I can to store in the freezer. And then everything else comes second, I guess. So when it comes to feeding um, you and your family, what, does, what challenges might you face? Just maybe trying to be cost effective in the, what the purchases are, you know, and like, is everybody gonna eat the food? <laughs> Some of the foods you make that people don't want to eat or like it's just being cost effective with the groceries because sometimes you can buy groceries and then they go bad real quick you know, before you can even get to them.